All right, good morning, my friends. It's uh, Thursday, um, donut day for me. Man, it rained all night last night. Um, thunder, uh, you know, rumblings. Um, it's amazing, really. But um, crazy weather, crazy times that we live in down here in the south. And so uh, it's going to be up in the 70s today, and uh, then it'll be freezing next week or whatever. So that's the way it is down here in the, uh, the sunny south, the heart of Dixie and uh, kind of where we are. So that's what's going on. Uh, this is, um, I see my last day to work for the year, many of you as well. Um, and then next week, uh, we're going to be gone all week. Uh, we'll be playing. Uh, first week of the year, uh, Tammy and I, along with Jackson and uh, Rachel, are heading to Orlando. So uh, we're going to see Mickey and Minnie and uh, just hang out as adults and have a good time. So um, should be fun. Uh, means next week I won't be teaching uh, here, so you get a break from me. Of course, you get to choose that any day you want to, but um, we won't have it at all next week. Uh, I'll be gone all week, so uh, we'll jump back into it. I'll see you in the morning for sure. So anyway, this is, well, if the Lord wills, I should say. Uh, so, let's, we're, man, we're turning the page, uh, our, our 11th lesson in the book of Acts we're in chapter three. This is where things get, uh, man, really cranked up and and uh, interesting from just a story form. And so I just want to make sure we're clear on that. Uh, I've entitled this message, Jesus Still Heals. That always invokes all sorts of, of stuff from one side or the other. The whole camp that says uh, the healings uh, ended with the apostles. And and so they get upset with that phrase. And then those that... Uh, that think that that you know every everybody's healed already. We just need to name it, claim it, and all of that. And so you've got kind of both extremes today. This I was telling the Tamster. I said, man, I just love teaching the word because I don't have to worry about what camp I fall into. I'm just going to teach the word and um, and just let it let it do its thing. Spurgeon always talked about. Uh, the job of the pastor was let the lion out of the cage. Just preach the word. Don't don't worry about boxing it in or or prefacing it. Just preach it. And so uh, that's what we're doing today. So here's where we are. Jesus has all, all, on a timeline. At this point in our story in the book of Acts, Jesus has already come. He has uh, was born in a manger, all of those things, lived a sinless life, became a sacrificial lamb, willingly gave his life on the cross to do the work of redemption. Uh, and, and that was done. Tetelestai, it was finished. Three days later, he was raised from the dead. The death no longer that that was that was a part of the curse has been immediately removed. We no longer those of us who are in Christ have to worry about death. Do our bodies give way? Do we die physically? Yes, spiritually, never. And so uh, this is this is what's going on now. He has promised the Holy Spirit that when he left and ascended, which he already has in our timeline too. Uh, when he has ascended, he promised that if he didn't do, then he couldn't pour out his spirit on us. And so uh, the church had gathered, and they were told to wait for the promise from on high, and then they would be uh, his witnesses. What was unsure of how that was going to happen and what it was going to look like when all the dust settled, what we realize is the church was born, the, that God is now still among us in the form of his spirit, uh, indwelling and infusing us together and infusing us with God. So we've been infused with the Spirit. We've been fused together by the Spirit. And so the world can still literally uh, experience Jesus. The, the, the world can no longer see Jesus, uh, but they can experience him through the body uh, of Christ, which is the church. So the church is now the body of Christ. The pure church is filled with the Spirit of Christ, right? We got that at baptism. We saw that. The true church, the pure church, there's a devotion to God. In, in individuals who are Christ followers, there is a devotion to God. Uh, there is a devotion to each other, right? We saw that, devoted to the, to the apostles' teaching, to the uh, fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. They were devoted to each other. They, they were glad the true church is a glad church. We're just joyful. The true church is a grateful church. We're grateful. The true church is a generous church. We give. This is this is who we are. So we have become now the hands and feet of Jesus. 
Uh, we are charged with taking the message of the cross and of the resurrection to the world. That's our message. So in specific, the message is repentance. And we're going to see that woven all the way through the gospel, I mean, the, the, the book of Acts. Now, we come to this passage, and we've, we've seen all of that. The church is growing. There's now 3,120. Within a, a, a few days, there's going to be over 5,000. If you add kids to that mix, uh, and, and a family thing, it, it could be 10,000 10, or so people. We, we, have, we have no idea. But that church is, is growing. God is collecting the redeemed. He's gathering them up. And so the gospel's going forth. Hearts are transformed. Uh, knees are bowed to, to Christ. The spirit of, of, of Christ is poured out on them, and they become infused with the rest of us. So this is what's been going on. You and me didn't start this thing. We have been infused just like from Peter's day all the way forward, the church total has been fused together. There's always a remnant of believers on this planet that is the body of Christ that does proclaim the Christ as King and Messiah. And, and so this is where we are. Now, uh, so we come now to this uh, incredible scene, and it's, it's, it's not so much linear like a timeline. He's just explained everything that was going on, and then he says, one day. So he just tells us, hey, I'm, I'm, let me just tell you about one experience of what, what was going on in, in the church. And he says, one day, chapter 3, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at 3 in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at me. Look at us, right? Look at us. So the man gave him their attention, expecting that they would give him something, right? Then Peter said, silver or gold, I don't have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to be to sit begging in the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now, that is a crazy story. So, uh, and, and it's powerful in so many ways. We're going to break it down in a little bit of time that we have. So here's what I want you to understand. Today, in this, in this book, is the first of over a dozen healings or miracles that were recorded by Dr. Luke. That's important because you and me and the world needs to know that, that though Christ is not present among us physically, his work is still going on through the body of Christ. It is the church that is the hope of the world. Christ in us is the hope of glory, right? So, so this world, if there's any hope for it, is because the church continues the work of Christ. Not, not trying to you know, get butts in the pews and not trying to get money in a plate, not try to build buildings. It is about the proclamation of repentance in the, uh, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you too shall receive this gift of the Holy Spirit and be infused with this life that you now hear and see among us. That's the purpose of the church. The church always is getting derailed from that, but that's the purpose of the church. So now, here's a man uh, crippled, right? The, the point of this is that the world would know that Jesus it didn't just go away. So a man crippled from birth. Listen, the, the man's never jumped. He's never walked. He's never stood. He's never played with kids from birth. He has been this way from birth. I, I've got a, I've got a, uh, a granddaughter. Uh, she's uh, been, been born from birth with very challenging issues. And one of them is she's never walked. She's never talked. Uh, she's never stood up except by the aid of her of her stander, uh, but she's in this situation. And you, so she's she, so we lay her on a beanbag, and she's she's in her bed, and she's in her chair, and she's in her stander, and she's watching her little sister play. She's watching all of us play when the family gathers and all the cousins are together. She watches all of them. She experiences none of it. This is the situation that he finds himself in. Now he's an adult. 
He's never worked a day in his life. He's never married. He's never had children. He is completely at the mercy of others. This is what it says. This is who this guy is. Daily, he people, whoever they are, God bless them, would take him from his home, sit him at the <coughs> at gate, beautiful. That was the biggest gate. I think it was 75 feet tall. It was the most ornate. I don't know if they put him there because that was where everybody wanted to come because everybody wants to go through the beautiful gate to see it and all of that. But whatever they were, that daily, they have been taking him to that place so that he could beg for food. That is his standard of life. For probably 40 years, he's been doing that. Placed daily at, at Gate Beautiful. Uh, he's facing rejection. He's facing difficult weather. You can imagine what it's like because you know yourself what happens when you walk down the streets, wherever your town is, and you see the homeless. You try not to look at them probably or, or they're asking for money and you're like, I don't know, busy. You know, we just kind of mumble and go on our way. Those people are experiencing all this rejection and shame because, you know, we get a job or whatever it is that, that, you know, people do as they see those people. This was his deal. Listen, it, it doesn't matter how cold it gets. Uh, you know, they're, they're in the weather. He, he's going to go sit at that temple. And when it's raining, he's going to sit at that temple. When it's cold, he's going to sit at that temple. When the sun is scorching, this is his lot in life. Now, this is, this is the situation. So Peter and John are just on their way to the temple because that, where else is the church going to go? They, they, there's there's 3,000 of them, and since so they would meet in the temple courts. They would go into that area. They would have their, which was common for people to do. You would see that's where a lot of the... Uh, you know, all of the, the teachers and, and all of that would be in there and they would have, that was kind of where they would just gather in, in, a, in a corner or wherever they were and they would teach. And so this was what was going on. So Peter and John are heading into, these are buddies. They've been buddies since they were young. They, their dads were, were partners. They were partners in fishing. These guys, uh, man, they've known each other and, and they walked with Christ and they've seen all that. They've been infused with the spirit of Christ. They are celebrating the fact that God is going to return and they're hoping it's soon. And so this guy says, Hey, money, please, money, please. And, and they're broke. So just for the record, this is not prosperity doctrine. All right. These disciples didn't all of a sudden, you know, get healthy, wealthy, and wise because they're, they're, they're Christ followers. That didn't happen. That's a myth that God wants all of us, you know, uh, wealthy and all that garbage. That's just that's just garbage. These men made it very plain. Hey, we're broke, just like everybody else around here, right? Just that's just food for thought. So then they go, hey, but but look at us, man. This is this is the from Peter going to, hey, man, I don't know the man to, hey, listen to me. Look 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 at me. Look look right here, right? When he's doing that, and then he says, hey, I ain't got no silver. I don't have any gold. But how about we let Jesus heal you? Right? This is what's going on. The proof of this is that Jesus is still doing his thing, right? So he says, this is what he says, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have, I give you. Now listen to what he says, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the hand, he helped him up, and instantly he walked. Listen, Jesus is still working. It is in Jesus' name. Now, that's not just some mantra that we say at the end of our prayers. I think I mentioned that already. You know, in the, in, uh, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. No, Jesus' name means in his stead, right? In his place. That's what that means. I'm invoking the name of Jesus who is residing in me by virtue of the Spirit, that if he were here presently, I'm only saying in his stead, I'm doing what he would do. This is, this is what that means in Jesus' name. And so it's important that we see that. So in, in, in Jesus' name, as though he were still here, I'm telling you, let's walk. Now, listen, there's power in the name of Jesus. And I just think it's important that we understand that. There are too many fake healers out there and other people out there trying to get wealthy off, off of all of that. And it, it's not about them. It doesn't it require a certain person. It's not any of that. It is the name of Jesus. There is no other name under heaven whereby we may be saved. At his name, every knee will bow, right? It's his name. It's his name. When you say the name Jesus, there and, and you're invoking that in that sense, there's a power that the world doesn't understand. This is what we're, we're being shown right here in the book of Acts. We are privileged to be able to invite the living God, Jesus, into the situations in our lives. This is truth. So I've got a friend of mine. 
Mike, he's, uh, man, he's been going through the ringer. Uh, he's had cancer once. <coughs> he lost his daughter to cancer. He now has cancer a second time. Do you know what I'm doing? Every afternoon when I'm walking, I'm inviting Jesus and into Mike's life and Mike's situation to see God do some crazy work. Christmas uh, Day, there was a wreck that happened near our town, and uh, a, a, a grandmother and mother was lost, uh, and a wife was uh, in a desperate state, and five kids were involved in this wreck. And, and every day since Christmas, um, I have been invoking the name of Jesus to bring healing and restoration into that situation, right? This is our privilege. This is, so we should think that way, not just go, oh, praying for you, or oh, God, so sorry, or, or you know, what, God bless, or whatever. No, no, no. It's time for the church to go, we are the church. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking God to do this. Now, we'll, let's just keep going. So what was the result of this? What was the result? You tell me. Did he pick up his pallet and walk? Yes. And what happened? He jumped to his feet because God strengthened the man's feet and ankles. And he jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went into the temple courts with him. And what's he doing? And he's walking and he's jumping and he's praising God. You don't think that created a scene? In comes this guy, and he's just jumping around, and he's walking, and he's shouting about, about Messiah and Jesus and all that, and everybody's looking at him and going, well, isn't that the guy that's by the gate all the time? You don't think that created a problem? We'll see that tomorrow. But that's what's going on. The man was able to walk into the temple, and he worshiped God. That should be the result of, 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 <coughs> of every healing, right? Now, there are those who will quote uh, the Old Testament, by his stripes we are healed. And they'll say, well, everybody should be healed. And if it's not healed, it's, it's your lack of faith. Can I tell you how foolish that is? That, that scripture, always taken out of context, is there, uh, by his stripes, did he heal us? Yes, he healed us uh, physically, but do we, do we see the result of that yet? No. Did he heal us from our sin? Yes. But do we see the result of that yet? No. Do, do we still sin? Yes. Were we healed from our sin? Yes. Were we healed from, from sickness and death and all that? Eventually, yes. That's the whole point. There's a positional. I am positionally righteous, but practically that won't happen till, till I die uh, or, or till I, I see Jesus. I, I am uh, positionally healed. But I won't practically see that until this old corruptible body that's decaying daily but being renewed inwardly, I won't, I won't find that perfection until this old corruptible body is transformed into that which is incorruptible, either at the coming of Jesus or at my death, right? That's the reality. And don't let anybody teach you anything else. It's all garbage from that point on. Uh, now, Let's, let's talk about some questions you may have about healing in just a couple of minutes that we've got. Does God still heal? Yes, he still heals. We see that through here. I have experienced it. You have probably experienced it. No stories of that. I could I could tell you story after story of sitting in India in some of the, the, the worship services and just listening to people there talk about healings that have taken place. And the reason why it seems more active in other countries is because they only have God. You and me, we we think we're going to put our, our faith in in, um, in everything else and we're, we're too busy. We got everything else, and but them, it's only it's only that they've only got Jesus. But but how do we know that? Well, because He has given to the gift. I mean, to the church, gifts of healing. He's given that. Now there will be some that say, well, those are no longer for today. But I don't find that in my Bible. I find that my Bible says, now to each one of us, a manifestation of the Holy Spirit has been given to the to the man. That means that each one of us has a, a certain facet of the Holy Spirit. And to some, he gave the gift of teaching. And to others, he gave the gift of service. And to others, he gave the gift of leadership. And to those, he gave the gifts of healing. And so there's that. There's also prayer, right? James tells us, any of you sick, call for the elders. Let them pray. And, and, and uh, the, the, the prayer offered in faith uh, will restore such a one. So we see these things. So does God still heal? Absolutely. We're seeing it in the New Testament. We have no reason to believe he doesn't today. Is everyone healed? No. Well, were they when Jesus was alive? Well, not everyone, no. But all that, that he chose to happen, that happened to. Now, how do we know that not all are healed? Well, because in Paul's day, he says, I left Trophimus sick at Miletus, right? So he's got a friend. He leaves him sick at Miletus. If he, if he had these uh, ability on his own to heal, he would have done so, but he didn't. Uh, Paul, his own thorn in the flesh, 
God didn't remove that from him, but said, no, 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 I want you to understand something. That infirmity uh, lets my grace show forth and that you can see that in your weakness, that's when I'm made strong. Um, it, it, what's, why do we need healing? What, what's going on? Well, there's a sin principle, right? That it's just the effect of the sin. The creation is groaning underneath the weight of, of, of that. So we, we have a sin principle. Our bodies are decaying. So they're going to get sick. They're going to wear out. Hearts are going to do things they shouldn't. Kidneys are going to quit doing. The mind is going to do different things. Sometimes bad choices. You drank too much. You ate too much. You smoked too much. You, uh, you know, all of those issues, they're, they're those kind of things. And there's the, the demoniac aspect of things. Just demons themselves wreak havoc on us. Uh, my personal sin will create that, right? The, many of you are, are, are sick and many of you sleep because you ate of the bread with a, you know, uh, in an unworthy fashion. So there, there is a need for healing. Well, how does healing come today? Well, several times. There's confession of sin. If that is the reason, healing comes. You confess your sin. If that healing was a result of God dealing with you about that, it's gone. Uh, sometimes it, it happens with the laying on of hands, right? You get other people to pray over you, to pray for you. Uh, there is the anointing with oil. There's the uh, healing medicines and things like that. Uh, so non-healing is not your fault necessarily or God's lack of care. It's just his glory. And so I, I don't have time to go any further into that, but man, powerful truth today, right? Lord bless you guys. Uh, rock the day and Lord willing, I'll see you in the morning.